Hi, I'm Alex and this is Pucks and Paperbacks. Today I have my May wrap up including some of the books I read for Asian Readathon and my childhood books. So let's get into it. Starting off with my childhood books. In May was my birthday so I did a video where I read some of my childhood books. I'll have it linked down below for you. It was such a fun video and honestly one of my favorites that I've made this year. The first two books I read were Corduroy by Don Freeman which was a childhood favorite. It's one of my favorites and it was okay. This is a childhood favorite. I had multiple copies of this growing up and I was disappointed and I'm sad about it. It's still gonna be a childhood favorite because it holds that nostalgia and memories but it was literally so short and I was really surprised and disappointed. And then I read It's Not Easy Being a Bunny by Marilyn Sadler and illustrated by Roger Bolin and this was another favorite book that like I just wanted to read all the time as a kid and when I read this I was just like why? <laughs> I think that this is mainly because one I work with children's books but I also have just read so many that are more impactful. This was about PJ Funny Bunny who doesn't feel like a bunny and so he tries to hang out with different animals and see if he likes their habitats better and then he kind of realizes that he's a bunny all along. It is a sweet message but it was just okay. <laughs> I read it and I was just like oh okay. The last picture book I read was DW Thinks Big and some of these books I actually got on eBay. This one included Thrifted. This was actually the most surprising because I know the TV show more even though Arthur was a really big part of my literacy growing up, I don't really remember the books as much as I remember the TV show. This actually made me want to read more of the Arthur books to see how different they are from the TV show. Because I grew up on the TV show, I remember most of the episodes. So I was hesitant going into the book because I was like, oh well isn't this just going to be the same as the TV show? But it wasn't. It has a completely different ending which I really enjoyed. Then I ended off reading two picture books. Books, Amber Brown is Not a Crayon by Paula Danzinger and Liz McGuire Picture This by Jasmine Jones. This was literally word for word from the TV show and this I absolutely loved and would recommend today. It was so good. It is about a girl named Amber who is in third grade and she is a hot mess. She has a fight with her friend when she learns that he's moving away. This was actually published in 1994 and whenever you're reading a childhood book you're always a little hesitant because does it still age well today? And the answer for this is yes. There are some fat phobic comments but besides that the message is very good and I would still read this to a kid today because it teaches you about what happens when your friend is moving away and why your feelings are valid. I really enjoyed that and I say in my video how much I loved her mom because her mom is not a type of parent that you see with a child who's going to automatically close off their feelings and invalidate them. Her mom is so good at just validating her feelings and being like okay this is what you need right now and that is what every parent needs to strive for because I thought this was so well done. It was awesome and I had a really good time reading it. Now those are all my childhood books that I read. Like I said the video will be down below if you want to go and watch it but let's talk about the books I read for the rest of May including a book that I've been talking about all month The Science of Being Angry by Nicole Mellaby. I was sent a copy of this to review from Algonquin Young Reader so thank you to them because I loved this. It has hockey in it which was a pleasant surprise. I didn't know that. They did not pitch that to me and it was a big surprise and I was so excited when it was implemented because give me every hockey book ever especially during the playoffs. I technically have read nine books this month which is really surprising to me because the playoffs have consumed my life but I took a week off from watching after the Florida Panthers lost <laughs> and now I'm actually not voting for anybody because I've realized every time I root for somebody they lose so I don't root for anybody. 
I just want everyone to have a good time out there and don't hurt each other and don't be a racist. So this is about an 11 year old girl named Joey. She's a triplet and she has two mothers and she develops anger and the whole book is her trying to figure out what this is coming from and in her mind she thinks it's the donor that her parents used. So when she's learning about genetics in school she decides that she's going to try and find the donor herself to try and find some answers and this is just so good. The family dynamics are good. What I love most about this book is the mental health representation, the queer rep, but also the way hockey is incorporated is so awesome. Joey's mama is a fan of the New Jersey Devils and the Chicago Blackhawks, but also Joey's half-brother Benny is a hockey player and he talks about how he has ADHD and it helps him and so he decides that she should also join and it would actually really help her get her anger out, which I really related to because as funny and ironic as it is, hockey is a calming sport for me. It really just helps me get out all of my pent up anger. And just the fact that the author showed how beneficial sports, especially hockey can be, was so amazing and I loved it. So I'll have a link down below if you wanna pick up this book or any of the books I mentioned in this video, but this is such a good one and I highly recommend it. Then I actually participated in the 48 hour book upload-thon hosted by Becca and the books. I'll have her channel down below. And the only book I read was Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Fraser. This wasn't on my Asian readathon TBR, but I just got from my library and I actually read it. So that was good. It's a really short book. So I read it for the book upload-thon prompt to read a short book. I'm really new to reading literary fiction. So that is where I'm going to start off talking about this book. So please take my word with a grain of salt because there's things I like and there's things I didn't. I really was intrigued by what it was about but also I'm very new to literary fiction. Like this is the first literary fiction that I've actually read entirely. The other one was Winter in Sokcho and uh I DNF'd it because it just wasn't for me and I wasn't really vibing with it at all. So this was actually a little bit better. This is about an 18 year old girl who's pregnant. Her father has died so she's experiencing grief and she is also experiencing a lot of depression about her pregnancy. It's that everybody around her is happy and she doesn't really get why. What I've learned is I love character driven books but I need a little bit of a plot. So she's a pizza delivery girl and she meets this woman when she calls and asks for pickles on pizza and she becomes infatuated with this woman and obsessed. So what I need in a book is something that keeps me picking it up. So there was nothing leaving me on a cliffhanger or anything for me to be like, oh, I can't wait to come back to this. So that's probably why it took me so long because I was just like, um, this is okay, but I want to see how it ends because I was just curious. Like I was invested in the story, but like not totally invested in the story, if you know what I mean. So I am just sad that I didn't like this because a lot of people really enjoy it. So I think that I'm just like, in the min minority but it still has a really good commentary on grief and also like being in a Korean family because her mom is like really happy that she's going to have a kid with an American boy and I just think there was really good commentary. What I'm learning that I like about literary fiction is the commentary is so good. Like this had a really good commentary on just a girl being scared about having a child and her just not being sure of what is happening or what she wants to do with her future. And so I really love that. It was really strong. That's what I'm seeing in literary fiction that I've read is that the message is really strong, but I really need to be invested in the plot and the characters. Uh, so I actually would recommend this because I didn't hate it but I honestly think I'm not the audience for it. So those are my thoughts. I am just disappointed that I didn't enjoy it as much as everybody else did because it has like five stars and I was just like, oh, 
I must have missed something. <laughs> then I actually completed something on my Bookopoly TBR. If you saw in May I had Bookopoly pick my TBR which was also kind of because I was going to participate in the 48 hour bookopoly -thon. It just kind of happened that way but I listened to the audiobook of The Comeback by E.L. Shen and I loved it. Oh my god, I loved it so much. I landed on sports, so this was my sports book. This is about a Chinese girl, Maxine, who is a figure skater. And I loved this so much because it talks about racism and bullying. And it also talks about the pressures that young girls face in figure skating. Figure skating is a very high pressure sport, especially from parents. So we do have a character who is just feeling this pressure from her mom. And I really just loved this. Maxine is such a good character. This book has a lot of layers. So we have Maxine who is in middle school and she's just trying to get by like everybody is and she is dealing with a lot of racism, microaggressions, and bullying and her this girl who she used to be friends with is doing nothing. She's kind of shutting her out and it is so horrible so she just feels super alone but when she's at figure skating she doesn't really feel that way but she's also still trying to figure out if she wants to do it or not but her parents are always checking in on her and they're telling her that if she wants to quit she can and there will be no punishment or anything like that which I really enjoy. But on the other side of the story, she meets a new girl at figure skating who is dealing with all of the pressures. Uh, she just feels super overwhelmed and like she isn't good enough. And that is really something that figure skaters have to go through. And so Maxine is really dealing with her own internalized racism. It's just such an important book that I'm glad kids have these. Like that's just why I love middle grade and so if you're looking for a book about figure skating I highly recommend this one because I really enjoyed it and the audiobook was good. It's super short. It's like four hours and I devoured it in like two days while I was playing The Sims. <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter at Pucks Paperbacks sometimes I update about my Sims and I updated a couple days ago because they really did me dirty. <laughs> Then the last book I read in May was another book that I picked out for my Asian Readathon TBR and Bookopoly picked my TBR. This is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Morakta and it is translated from Japanese into English by Ginny Tapley Takimori. And I actually enjoyed this. I was up in the air with it because I wasn't sure how I was feeling about it but it made me learn how I do like character driven books. I say this all the time. I like character driven books but I'm learning I really need a little bit of plot because I need something to compel me to be like oh I really need to pick this up. Like I want to know what happens. This is about Kyoko who is 36 and she's been working in a convenience store for 18 years. I loved the conversations around adulthood and just like not being normal and I'm saying that in the sense that like you're not to the path that everybody else is. For instance for myself I graduated undergrad at like 26 um, because I just had a lot of things college like screwed me over and I was in college for way too long and so now it's like you feel like especially with a pandemic thrown into it that you're not really where everybody else is and you get a lot of scrutiny for it and so does Kyoko. Like literally she goes to these places and she goes to parties with her friends and they're like oh we have to set you up with someone. What do you mean you're still working in a convenience store? And like degrading her for working in a convenience store which is not really like it's kind of normal but I will say that this is set in Japan so it's definitely a cultural difference versus of like what it's like in the US but it was so relatable actually because like as someone who also works part-time and like isn't seen as like the same or like working hard enough is 
oh my god it's just so true and like this is why I just love adult books because like how relatable is it? I also want to mention and not comment on because it's not my place to say but I will leave some reviews down below for this book including Literary Lily who I really love. Go check out her channel because she's great. She also talked about this book because she said that the character is coded autistic. It's not said on the page but she said that she is coded autistic and so I'll leave a review from her down below as well as some other reviews from Asian reviewers but I actually really enjoyed this but because she's coded autistic this is actually a really important part of the book because you get to see the ableism and discrimination that Kyoko actually faces in the workplace from her co-workers and even her bosses. Even though she's a hard worker it really shows how it is hard as a disabled person to get a job elsewhere because of discrimination. My only little qualm with this book is that I really would have liked it to just been a novel because you are kind of cut off and it would be nice to have seen like where her life is headed like maybe just like a full story about her so if we could get that that would be awesome uh but I actually enjoyed this one so I'm getting into literary fiction and hopefully by the end of the year I will figure out where I stand on it and what I like and dislike because I am having trouble. <laughs> so if you have any recommendations for me that you think I would enjoy feel free to leave them down below and that is it for my May wrap up. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps out my channel when you do so and if you're new here feel free to hit subscribe. It's pride month so it's the law. I'll have my June TBR in the cards and down below because that is where I mention all of the things happening on my Patreon and my channel this month. If you become a patron on any tier this month you will receive a personalized book recommendation from me. You just have to fill out a survey and I will send you one by the end of the month. We also have a watch party, a bi-monthly LGBTQ plus book club, and I'm hosting a Patreon trivia night so go head over to my Patreon if any of that sounds interesting to you. Thank you for watching. I will see you next Tuesday with another video.